All right, so let's say you have a simple animation like this. So you're basically just transforming or, you know, using a texture that we have over here as a mask to, you know, switch between two different shaders and that's all cool, right? But when you hit render, so like I'm going to do right over here, when you hit render and the, and the whole thing is done, your client might, might come and ask that, hey, you know what? I, I do love the whole effect, but the white color is not really going well with me. I would like to have some skinnish color or like whatever color, orange, pink, whatever the hell he wants or she wants. And how would we tackle that? right i mean it's it's like super late and you really don't have a lot of time to re-render the whole thing out and if you take a look at the diffuse color pass it looks like this so on my channel i've shown a few tricks on how you can change textures and colors in compositing which heavily relies on diffuse color pass and this is how the diffuse color pass looks so if it were a texture in, instead of this white color things would get even super complicated so at the end of the day we would really need to rely on a mask that will allow us to mask this whole thing out and rotating this thing out jesus christ uh, I'll, I'll quit my job not gonna lie i'll quit my job i'll just leave it right away i'm not gonna do, i'm not gonna rotate this whole thing out so uh here's when things get interesting right so to help with situations like this uh i like to rely on shader aovs now shader aovs are really 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 awesome and basically what they allow you to do is well oh instead of me telling what it does i'll just show it to you right so over here in the shaders tab just add a aov node right so aov output node and as you as you can see it requires a color output so you really can't connect uh, a vector to it i guess it i guess let's let just try cause vector the color and vector they oh so they get there you go so i guess you can uh, connect that but in this case we're going to connect this uh this mask this texture right over here all right and i'm going to name this one to let's just say uh four because um this is on my fourth material right or the fourth object so four there you go and over here in the shader aov tab i'm just going to select click on plus and i'm just going to change the name to four as well so these two have to match all right and then what i'm going to do again is hit save and re-render uh, this out just to show it to you guys and now if you go to the compositing tab you'll notice that we have a socket over here all right and now if i view it take a look at that so for the fourth object right so in this case this was my fourth object so let me just go to the layout and let me just hide them uh, there you go so the inside part right so obviously uh, they they all of these were hiding the inside part of it uh, the my fourth object which is this one so the mask, the texture that I used on my fourth object, uh, it is being displayed right over here. So we have successfully exported the pass as a render, as, as, as we successfully exported the texture as a render pass. And this is just, hmm, this is pretty cool. So you guys are we were talking about getting a mask and literally we do have a mask so what i'm going to do is quickly add a add the shader aovs node and just uh i'll, I'll get back to you then all right cool so now i have added my all of these uh, aov passes on each of my object and yes i'm using uh, so again you can combine all of this effect into just one whole thing but that's a different tutorial uh, but yeah so i have four objects and they have four different masks on them so slight variation so therefore four different aovs all right and yeah and if you take a look at the my passes you can see we have these four four shader aovs and all that's left for us is to hit f12 and let's just see how well so what else? so basically how are we going to tackle this whole problem all right so now in the compositing tab we have four of our textures all right so that's that's pretty cool <laughs> excuse me so now all we need to do is combine them so let's add a mix node three four there we go so we're getting this uh, odd thing right over here and it happens sometime and in some cases doesn't so the other cases i'll discuss that in just a sec but if you ever get stuck into this all you need to do is hit the add a blending mode and blender uh for some reason right so if we hit add we're getting blacks over here but this stays transparent uh, i don't know why that is the case i guess if you mess around with the values as you can see over here 
right this value right over here so if i set this to one um let's let's see what happens and i'm just doing this live <laughs> so i want to see where it goes yep no difference no difference at all so i'm just going to keep it at zero I, I oh this was for the first material jesus Okay, so maybe that would have worked, but I was using the wrong pass. But whatever the case is, there is, of course, a solution. So what I'm going to do is keep on doing this, right? So I'm going to add the second one to it, and it's, it is it, uh, it is getting added. So that's cool. So then the first one, and now we have our old shoe masked with, with the, the whole shoe ready with the mask. And we're currently it is showing a lot of transparency. So to tackle that, what we can do is just add a color ramp. There we go. So now we have the mask ready to rock. And if you remember my past tutorials about uh, the you know changing textures and colors and compositing, uh, if you haven't watched them, uh, the link should be up there by now. But it just dude, just uh, just go through it. What we need to do is recombine our passes. So I'm just gonna add the diffuse. Whoopsie, add the diffuse and the indirect. So diffuse direct and diffuse indirect. I'm gonna add them, then multiply that result with the diffuse uh, color pass. And if you view this, this is how it was originally. So now it's time to manipulate the diffuse color pass, which is this one. So what I'm gonna do is add a mix node and put this thing on the bottom socket because this has to be the foreground and this has to be the background and you can of course the switch inputs if things are not working right and as you may have guessed we're going to use this thing as a mask so let's just view this and yeah so i think everything is working just fine so if i now change this color to something like orange or something uh yeah something like this look at that and we are getting like this white ish eh? so anti-aliasing is happening i guess but to tackle that we can just simply crunch the color ramp and there we go so now if I plug this color, so our newly modified diffuse color pass uh, to the multiply uh, mix node. And now if I view that, boom, 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 look at that. Do you see the potential in this? Do you see how awesome shader AOVs are and how creatively you can use them? I mean, this is like pretty cool and you can use them for n number of things. So I can just, I have a few videos uh, planned in the future for like, we're gonna do some awesome compositing and this is just awesome and <laughs> i don't know why i added that big hand over there but this is this is pretty cool and this thing right here so it doesn't have to be an orange color so what i can do is since i have my uv pass with me what i'm going to do is add a map uv node put that thing over here and connect the uv to the uv and let me just grab a texture off screen so this wood texture uh, <laughs> use this wood texture so many times and as you can see this wood texture is mapped onto our shoe so let me just connect that to the orange socket or the orange color and now look at that we have wood over here so this truly is amazing right i mean we we technically ended up you know adding four passes to it but uh depending on how on how you how much you optimize your scene that can be reduced now uh just another thing i wanted to talk to you guys about and that was the uh, the other thing you know at the start of the video i said that you know sometimes the shader arrows give a different output so i'm just going to disable that and I'll, I'll just talk about the other output so i have this other collection where i have combined all of my textures uh yep you can do that and uh, i'll make it i mean i'm going to make a tutorial on that as well but basically here as well i am exporting these aov outputs because i needed variation so i ended up using four different ones for each and every texture or object and yes so i'm i think the names are same as well so if i hit render and if i go to compositing everything should work just fine uh yep so let's go to compositing tab okay there you go everything is working just fine but now if you take a look at the <laughs> AOV passes you can see that they are perfect we don't see the transparency issues I mean it is just dandy right so there we go I mean at last time we needed to add, add uh, we needed to add the color ramp for the so that we'd get you know we'd get rid of the transparency but here we don't need to and if we just plug this whole thing again right over here you can see that it is working just fine and I think the the anti-aliasing yeah at this point it's not that 
bad. So I think let's let's enable the color ramp to see if we really need it. Yeah, a bit I think works. But yeah, so two different outcomes, right? So dip, so I've showed you guys uh, two different ways to tackle them. So either or happens, you guys are ready with it. And now to just get rid of my OCDs in my mind, I need this black background to be transparent. So what I'm going to do is add an alpha over node, connect that to the bottom socket, use the factor or just uh, do we even need a factor? Yeah, I think we need a factor. So let's just connect the alpha to the factor. And let's just view this. And now it is showing us white in the background, but we don't need white. We need it to be transparent. So select the value to be one and alpha to be one as well. And there we go. <laughs> so now it is, yeah, OCD is all, all calm down now. So that is how you would basically uh, tackle such problems. So if you have some masks, right, in your in your shader graph, uh, I'd recommend to you just just export them as uh, AOVs. You know, you'll never know when you might need them. And yeah, so that that's that's really the whole thing for this tutorial. And I would really uh, like to thank Mikhail for uh, just giving me this model. All right, Cause this dude really is awesome. I mean, if you take a look at the model, it is just fantastic. And he made it, and he just gave it. You know, <laughs> I just I just asked him on Art Station that hey, you know what? I I really have a cool thing to show, and I need your model for it. It because it's just cool. It this whole thing, this whole effect looks really cool on shoes, and he's he just he just sent it to me. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, super super awesome guy and i'm really glad he did because yeah in one way he is responsible for this tutorial so thank you mikhail hopefully i'm spelling your name right but yeah so just guys just give this guy a follow on uh, art station or just check his workout it's it's pretty awesome so uh other than that i think this is it this is the tutorial uh hopefully you guys learned something you know uh this again it's i don't i don't think i taught you guys something really special but you just wanted to uh, show you guys that hey you can do this to get to this you know so if we went from this to this without rotoscoping or like getting 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 our <laughs> bp up or something so yeah that's that's pretty cool i think so yeah i'll see you in the next one until then be infinite